Hello and welcome to the video series for deploying ASAP, Juniper Network's automated support and prevention solution for your network. ASAP provides reactive and proactive tools that provide you with the fastest method to thoroughly detect, mitigate, and resolve hardware and software faults on your Junos devices. This four-part video series will guide you through the installation and configuration of the ASAP tools ServiceNow and Service Insight. In the interest of time, delays and pauses have been trimmed. The resulting workflow is somewhat faster than real time, so you may need to pause or review some segments. The first video will cover the deployment of Juno Space and the installation of ServiceNow and Service Insight. We will walk through some initial configuration of the Juno Space network management platform and perform device discovery. In the second video, we will explore the ServiceNow user interface, install reactive advanced insight or AI scripts on Juno's devices, and perform initial configuration of ServiceNow. The third video focuses on best practices and more advanced concepts in ServiceNow, such as auto-submit policies and device analysis. Finally, the fourth video shifts focus to proactive maintenance with service insight, such as proactive bug notifications and end-of-life reporting. We will look at testing and troubleshooting AI scripts on Juno's devices, using the REST API to automate the automation, and conclude with configuring a partner proxy and end customer setup. Let's deploy space with the vSphere client. Select File, Deploy OVF Template, and browse to the space OVA you downloaded from the Juniper Network support site. Edit the memory settings to reflect 32 gigabytes of RAM and add a hard disk of size one terabyte. You will only need to define a VLAN for network adapter one. If you require a dedicated management network interface, you will need to modify adapter 4 for that specific management VLAN, but such topics are beyond the scope of this tutorial. You should now see the memory, network adapter, and hard disk options shown. Power on the virtual machine and proceed to the console for initial configuration of Juno Space. Log in with the default credentials of admin and password ABC123, all lowercase. The system will ask you to select, confirm, and log in with a new password. Our demonstration system will consist of only one node. Specialized nodes for standalone database and fault management and performance monitoring servers are beyond the scope of this material. Configure the Juno Space Virtual Appliance IP, subnet mask, and default gateway, and name server. We will not be configuring a device management interface or adding this node to an existing Juno Space fabric. Next, configure the web graphical user interface or VIP address and enter the network time server address, appliance display name, maintenance password, and apply if the settings are correct. Shortly, the Juno Space web UI will load and prompt for login. The default credentials will be a username super with password Juniper123, again all lowercase. The system will prompt you to change the password. Let's do so. The system will log you out, log in with the new credentials. After downloading the ServiceNow image from the support site, look at the bottom of the main menu on the left-hand side of the screen, Expand Administration, and click Applications. Find the green plus icon near the top of the screen, select Upload via HTTP, browse to the ServiceNow file, and upload it to Juno Space. You will be presented with a job ID, which you can click for additional details. Return to Administration Applications and click the green plus once more. Click the row named ServiceNow and click Install. Again, you can follow the progress by clicking on the job ID. After installation is complete, log out and back in to refresh the menu system, which will now include ServiceNow. Now let's expand the virtual appliance drive partitions using the one terabyte hard disk we added previously. Use an SSH client to log into the Juno Space Appliance as the admin user. 
It is imperative to set a keep alive for your SSH session. If the SSH session ends during partition expansion, the unused portion will be irrecoverable. Select option 6 from the menu. This will cause Junospace services to temporarily stop. We will expand choices 1, 3, and 4, corresponding to root, varlog, and temp, each by an additional 20 gigabytes. We will then allocate the remainder of the one terabyte hard disk to the VAR partition, number two. Be sure to find and enter the total free disk space remaining. In this case, it shows 963.97 gigabytes. After expansion is complete, Juno Space will boot normally. Once the UI is back up, log in and select Administration, Fabric, click the Space node checkbox, select Actions, SNMP Configuration. Be sure to monitor the web service, all disks, and provide the location and notification email. Select Administration, SMTP Servers, enter the requisite information and save settings. Click Test Configuration and ensure that the test was successful. You should receive an email from Space to that account. Select Role-Based Access Control, User Accounts, and right-click the Super User to modify the user settings. Provide valid administrator information, including a reply to email from system notifications, and finish the process to save the settings. JunoSpace needs a map to configure the settings in each Junos release. This is handled by the use of DMI schema. JunoSpace ships with some prepackaged schema that may never be used but will consume system resources, so let's delete those. Select Administration, DMI Schema, and select View Delete Unused Schemas. Select the checkbox at the top of the window to select all and click Delete. You should consider automating a repeated database backup. Select Administration, Database Backup and Restore, click the Backup icon, and configure the parameters. You can backup locally or to a remote Linux file server. You can choose to include the network monitoring polling and trap data. Finally, schedule the time of day and repetition interval. For this example, I am using Sundays at midnight indefinitely. Click the job ID that appears to confirm your backup settings are scheduled. From the Applications drop-down menu just below the Space logo at the top left, click Network Management Platform and switch to ServiceNow. You will see the menu items refresh. Expand Administration, Organizations and click Add Organization. Provide a logical name. Leave the real setting as is and provide the credentials used to access the Juniper support site. You will need outbound access on port 443 to services.juniper.net and select Juniper message bundle or JMB filter level. You can choose to send no automatically collected troubleshooting data, all data, or from several intermediate options. If the organization is successfully added, you will receive a commercial license to use the platform for ServiceNow and Service Insight. Next, select Administration, Global Settings, and if you choose, modify the purge time for the various ServiceNow data. The most important but somewhat complex setting is the repeat incident dampening period. By default, it is set to none. Let's look at an example of the none behavior one could expect. Advanced Insight scripts on a Junos device will dampen an event or outage type to once per hour. You can see that here in the timestamps. 
That may be preferable if you truly wish to see all events for all devices. However, it may be overwhelming for new users of ServiceNow. Instead, changing the setting to Always will cause ServiceNow to save only the first event or incident of that type for a given device. Only after that incident is escalated to JTAC and the case becomes closed, or if the incident is deleted in ServiceNow, will you find a new incident from that device for that type. You can also specify dampening in terms of a time delay. Provide the system email you have been using and save the settings. If you wish to forward ServiceNow traps to a network monitoring system like the one embedded in Juno Space, expand Global Settings and click SNMP Configuration and click Add. Configure the applicable parameters and click Add once more. This option will then be available when creating notifications, which we will discuss later. Click Dashboard at the top of the menu, and in the main window you will find a URL to download the ServiceNow MIBS. Download and extract that file now. Switch back to the Network Management Platform application. Expand Network Monitoring and click Admin. Click SNMP MIB Compiler. Click Upload MIB to browse and add the two files contained in the archive. Right-click each one that is now shown under Pending and compile the MIB. Let's verify that a commercial license has been obtained by ServiceNow under Administration, Licenses, and then switch back to the ServiceNow application. You will also notice that Service Insight has launched now that we have defined an organization. From the menu, expand Administration, Global Settings, and click Core File Upload Configuration. I recommend changing the Core File Upload setting to Secure FTP Upload through ServiceNow. With this setting, you will only need to allow the Juno Space node IPs access to sftp.juniper.net on port 22. Click the Check FTP Server button to test connectivity to the Juniper Networks file server. The status should say Success. If it does not, chances are that you have a firewall blocking the outbound connection from your network. Let's now discover devices to place them under the management of Juno Space. Expand Devices, Device Discovery, and click Discover Targets. Clicking the green plus icon will allow you to define host names, IP addresses, ranges, or subnets up to a slash 22. For this example, we will use the Upload CSV option. A CSV file template can be obtained by clicking the CSV sample link. Let's browse to the file and upload it. Click Next. Specifying probes can speed up the scan time for sweeping an IP range or subnet as Juno Space will only try to log into a device that responds to the probe settings. If an SNMP community is defined, it will also be used for the network monitoring feature. Click Next. We have already defined the credentials in our CSV file, but normally you would define them here. You should provide a login in the Juniper Super User class as ServiceNow requires read-write access to the file system. Click Next. As an option, you can define SSH fingerprints, but we will skip this step and click Discover. Devices responding to the ping probe will show as discovered in the column with the green colored bar. Unsuccessful logins or device configurations not having a defined SNMP probe will be placed under the failed column with a red bar. If a probe criterion is met and the login is successful, Juno Space will indicate so in the Managed column with a blue bar. Let's now look at the configuration changes made by Juno Space. Show the set configuration and match for default-log-messages. You should find that the set system syslog file default log messages has now been defined at the any info level. The match statement should also include AIS data available at the last position. If this is not the case, switch to configuration edit mode, delete system syslog file default log messages, and commit. Click device management under the devices menu and the newly discovered devices should show up and in sync. It is ideal but not required that the Junos version matches the DMI schema version. If they do not match, you may find that some settings may not be configurable. In rare cases, some features may throw an error when the platform or an installed application attempts to manage a device. Let's switch back to the platform, 
Expand Administration, and click DMI Schemas. It will be simplest if you can allow outbound access from the Juno Space nodes to xml.juniper.net on port 443. However, if not, you can use an SVN client, such as Tortoise, on a workstation to define files locally and build an archive file that can be uploaded to an offline Juno Space fabric. More information about this can be found in knowledge base articles on the support site. For this example, let's use the more common SVN repository option. Click the Update Schema icon shown at the top of the main window, click Configure, and define the SVN URL. Enter your support site login credentials, click Test Connection, and if successful, save your settings. Click Connect. You can select Show Recommended Schemas Only, which will filter the list to those currently available, but not installed. Click the Select All checkbox at the top of the list and click Install. You can watch the progress by clicking the job ID. The device management window will reflect the newly installed DMI schemas. In this example, three are still missing as they were not available for the specific Junos versions installed on these devices. We can still find more similar versions than what are being applied with the default settings though. Return to the DMI schemas menu option and click the update schemas icon. Click the small red X to remove the previously applied filter select SVN Repository and click Connect. You can browse the retrieved list or apply a filter by hovering the mouse cursor over the right hand side of the device family or release columns, clicking the small triangle icon, entering filter information and clicking Go. Select the desired schemas and click Install. Since these schemas will not exactly match the installed Junos version, you will need to right click the newly installed schema shown in the list and select Set as default schema. Each device family can have one default schema. The device management window will now reflect the installed and applied default DMI schema. For most cases, you can ignore the schema update needed warning. This concludes part one of our video series. Please proceed to the second video. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.